hopefully I'm in the right place. If I'm not, someone stop me now. So today I'm going to be talking about scaling Ethereum with rollups. Uh, so my name is John Adler. I'm with Fuel Labs, and we're building an optimistic rollup implementation. So first let's talk about the scalability problem. Uh, we all know that you know, Bitcoin can process around three transactions per second, maybe up to seven, depending on how, how big they are. Ethereum can process around 15 transactions per second. Maybe if you're doing just simple payments, that can get up to 30. And meanwhile, Visa can process you know, five to 10,000 transactions per second. This is you know, generally the scalability problem. We want to increase transactions per second, so the scalability, and we want to do this without decreasing decentralization. Uh, so there's a few potential solutions that have kind of been proposed over the past 10 years for channels and, you know, more recently for Plasma. Uh, channels aren't really great for scaling. Uh, you know, they're capital efficient. They don't support open participation contracts like Uniswap. Uh, and generally, they have a poor UX in terms of capital because you have to lock up your money and it can't be used elsewhere. Uh, so, you know, channels aren't really a scaling solution. They're an interactivity solution. They allow instant finality, which is great. Blockchains can't provide that but they're not really a scaling solution. Plasma is a little bit better, uh, but Plasma Cash is kind of the only Plasma variant that provides us with good security guarantees. And Plasma Cash also doesn't support open participation with smart contracts, and it requires things like checkpoints to prune coin history, uh, which makes it you know, actually use a non-trivial amount of block space. And the big problem with Plasma is that it's permissioned. So ideally we want something that allows open participation, is permissionless, and is trustless and capital efficient. And we're willing to sacrifice the instant finality that channels provide. We're OK with having at block time or potentially slower latency for transactions. We're OK with that sacrifice. But you know, we don't want to sacrifice on anything else. We want everything else. So before we, figure, we, before we see the, you know, the solution that we're going to talk about, which is obviously roll-ups because that's the, that's the subject of this talk, let's see what is the scalability bottleneck and how does roll-up tackle this bottleneck. So, one common talking point is that EOS is centralized and it is more, sorry, it's, it's more scalable than Ethereum because it's centralized around 21 block producing nodes. That's kind of a common talking point. But, and if you take away one thing from this talk, it should be this, that this is wrong. If we look at, you know, the, the charts of block producers on EOS versus Ethereum and Bitcoin, you'll see that Ethereum, four mining pools control the majority of hash rate. Bitcoin for mining pools control the majority of hash rate. So there's fewer nodes. So why is it that EOS is more scalable than Ethereum and Bitcoin? And the answer is that the number of nodes actually has nothing to do with scalability, and that's because consensus is not the bottleneck. So what is the actual bottleneck? Is this. On Ethereum, we want a non-consensus full node with the following specs, approximately a four-core CPU, eight gigabytes of RAM, and an NVMe SSD, to be able to fully validate the chain at a rate that's 10 times faster than it grows, than blocks are produced. With Bitcoin, the parameters are different. We want a non-consensus node with a Raspberry Pi and a hard disk drive, must be able to fully validate the chain approximately 30 or 50 times faster than it grows. And EOS is different. They choose a different parameter. They want non-consensus nodes to run a 64-core CPU, have one terabyte of RAM, rated NVMe SSDs, and that kind of computer should be able to fully validate the chain approximately as fast as it grows. And this is a social contract. It is not consensus. This is not, and no, at no point here did I say anything about number of nodes or about the consensus process. And that's because the number of nodes has nothing to do with scalability. It is all about what are the hardware and network requirements we have for a user to run a full node to do a full validation. So how does Ethereum's scaling bottleneck manifest itself? How do we get from that hardware specs to 15 transactions per second? We have, we have to get there somehow. Uh, you know, why is it that Ethereum can only do 15 despite the fact that you know, it has much higher node hardware requirements than Bitcoin, and Bitcoin can do maybe half of that? Uh, there are two reasons. The first one is that Ethereum can support more complex transactions. It can do you know, these stateful, uh, state, uh, richly stateful, Turing complete smart contracts that we all know and love Ethereum for, uh, as opposed to Bitcoin's you know, stateless predicates. Uh, and the second reason is because of state accesses and state growth. Generally, accessing state during Ethereum transactions is a very expensive process. And the Ethereum state size, uncompressed, is around 45 gigabytes compared to Bitcoin's 
2 gigabytes. And this is actually why an NVMe SSD is needed, because the Ethereum state is too large to fit into RAM on most consumer hardware. So roll-ups to the rescue. So what's the roll-up design paradigm? It's basically you do, you take all the state, you move it off-chain, you do execution on the state also off-chain, and you only use the Ethereum main chain for data availability. So you just post the roll-up chain's blocks as call data. Make the data available, and that way you don't have to worry about the data withholding attack that is a big problem for regular sidechains. This allows us to build trust and minimized, permissionless, scalable sidechains for the first time ever in the history of blockchain. And you can't do this on Bitcoin. And you can ensure the validity of these of the sidechain's blocks uh, with several different different things. One is uh, validity proofs or zero knowledge proofs, and this scheme is known as zero, zk rollups. Uh, another thing you can do is you just have a fraud proof and then a synchrony assumption. So if someone commits to a block, if no fraud proof has been submitted within a long period of time, say a few days or a week, then you just say it's valid. The last thing you can do is an interactive verification game plus a synchrony assumption. And this is what the guys at Offchain Labs are doing. I don't think this one here has a good name yet, as a, as a general name, but you know, it's an alternative to, to optimistic rollups. So why can rollups scale? So with the rollups, consensus nodes and miners, uh, i.e. miners, and non-consensus nodes, so the users, don't need to execute the rollup transactions. They only need to order data and make it available. So you know, imagine taking a movie and just downloading it. Or you, know, you have a, a Linux ISO, and you just download it and put it on your disk. You can do that very, very quickly. And, and you know, this doesn't require a lot of resources. So by uh, separating data availability and ordering from execution, now you have a system that can potentially scale. And this is kind of the, almost the best thing you can do, because there's no lower execution to no execution. Right? If you do all the execution off-chain, the on-chain is no execution. You can't really do better than this. So the last slide, I said can with a star. So why can? So let's kind of look at the profile of verification cost versus block production cost. So in normal blockchains and in optimistic rollups, this cost is symmetric. So in order to run a full node as a non-consensus node versus a consensus node, it's basically the same cost. They're both doing the same thing. And since it's symmetric, it's easy to analyze. With ZK rollup, things get a little more complicated. And with chains that embed ZK proofs directly at the consensus layer, for instance, Coda, because sure, the verification cost is very cheap. So as a non-consensus node, you can keep up. But the block production cost is much more expensive. So this means that potentially block production is more centralized. So this becomes you know, much more complex to analyze. So we'll ignore it for now. And you can extend what we talked about earlier about non-consensus nodes to also talk about consensus nodes. Uh, but for now, let's, let's analyze the symmetric case of optimistic rollups. And what I'm going to say now might surprise you, but if everyone had a single EVM optimistic rollup and all the block space on Ethereum was just filled with data availability for this rollup, we would not have a few hundred transactions per second like you've been told. We would have 15 transactions per second. We would have zero scalability gains. And that's because the end users would still have to fully validate this roll-up chain. And if you have EVM in the roll-up chain, well, guess what? Unless you increase the hardware network requirements of the users, you're st they're still only going to be, be able to execute on the same hardware 15 transactions per second. right? So roll-ups does not scale because there are fewer users using this particular roll-up chain. Right? The number of users has nothing to do with scalability. It's all about the hardware network requirements. So. If, uh, if optimistic rollup doesn't actually give us any scalability whatsoever, if we use it on the EVM, what, how, how, how does it allow us to scale? And the intuition here is that sharding, in general, like what's being used in ETH2, it provides us with increased transactions per second because it allows us to do many execution threads in parallel. It has nothing to do with the number of users. It's all about many execution threads in parallel. And Guess what optimistic rollups allows us to do? It allows us to do dynamic heterogeneous sharding. So you can have a single data availability layer, the Ethereum chain, and then you can have several rollup chains that all execute essentially in parallel independently. This means that you can do the you can get the nice benefits that sharding will get you, and you can get this on Ethereum one. 
and a heterogeneous because each shard is different. Unlike in the ETH2 design where all shards need to be exactly the same, here shards can be different. And one, yeah, uh, and one nice thing that it allows you to do is it allows you to experiment and explore with different execution data models without any hard forks on the main chain. For instance, at Fuel Labs, we're doing one with a UTXO data model. Uh, you can also have something like a custom VM that's well suited for interactive verification games, which Offchain Labs is doing. You can use Mo uh, Libra's Move VM if you want. You can, you can do state rent, and you can have application specific execution. So, one thing I want to drive home since this is the hackathon is that you know, application specific optimistic rollups can and should be a thing, and it's something that you should think about designing. You know, doing EVM again, as I said before, doesn't provide any scalability. Build application specific optimistic rollups. They work, they can scale, they're simpler, they're easier to meter around, uh, and they're not really that hard. Uh, so beyond optimistic rollups and sharding, uh, can we get better than this? Yes, we can. Uh, we can actually do, uh, we can actually get sublinear cost on data availability by doing, uh, by using data availability checks. Uh, and the kind of design paradigm around this is uh, being implemented in Laser Ledger, which you can check out if you're interested. So the TLDR, number of nodes don't affect scalability. Consensus doesn't affect scalability. It's all about the hardware requirements for a user to fully validate. And because of this, the EVM doesn't really provide scalability. Instead, why don't you just explore with different uh, execution and data models? And you know, don't wait for someone else to build a scalable optimistic rollup chain for you. You can reach out to me. You can reach out to anyone else in the optimistic rollup community. And you can build application-specific rollups that scale very well. Okay, that's it. Thank you, everyone.